as opposed to the Wailing Wall in Waterford, Wisconsin. No, no, no. Two more, quickly. Why is the kid having to go get more eggs? They had more than two in the initial basket he brought. I blame the chicken. If his excruciatingly exaggerated pursuit of excellence didn't need them to be exactly the same size, why did he expel the first pair of eggs by simple visual examination? What, you think I could resist egg puns? Why well, can't let that happen? Allons-y! Doctor Who said what now? It is not the, uh, it is the imbalance. Movie gets Hercule Poirot confused with Adrian Monk. Forgive me. I am Belgian. That's Belgist. In the church of the Holy Sepulchre above us, there's actually nothing above them except a wall. And while Poirot might have not meant exactly above us, the church he speaks of is not by the Wailing Wall. It's in the Christian quarter of Jerusalem. The Wailing Wall is by the Dome of the Rock, which is an Islamic shrine. I mean, of course, the chief inspector of the police. And do I believe now does regret inviting me to consult on this case. Why would he invite anyone to consult on this case when you can just pin it on whomever you like? Somebody wasn't paying attention in Police Corruption 101. Also, if you're going to pick an inspector, why the one who is known as the best detective in the world? Did you search the office as I asked? Uh, yes, sir. And did you find what I said you might? Uh, yes, sir. The chief inspector decided, yeah, I stole this priceless relic, so I'll keep it in a bag in my office. No detective will look there. <laughs> I get that this is to set up Waro's super advanced Jedi ninja detective powers, but the chief was standing right here when he sent the armed guard to the gate, and came this wall. So what are the chances he still runs straight toward these things? I can only see the world as it should be, and uh, when it is not the imperfection, stands out like uh, the nose in the middle of a face. Or like two mustaches fighting under the nose for dominance. Ray and Gilderoy Lockhart finally in a scene together, and one shipper's fanfiction universe-crossing sex scene might finally come true. Hercules Poirot? Hercule Poirot, I do not slay the lions. God bless a movie that gives a clear primer on name pronunciation. Otherwise, I might end up calling a character named Lara, Laura, for two straight videos and not even know it. That would be a nightmare. You are from the British Consulate. Poirot gets a telegram from London, which means he's going to have to go there to solve a case. Time to take a train. A train that will just happen to be the setting for a murder committed by 12 people and require the exact knowledge he possesses to solve. Kenneth Branagh has an incredible sense of how to use the camera. This tracking shot from outside following this conversation is just one of the many examples of beautiful camera work in this movie, which all together are worthy of a sin removal. With the arrival of Judy Dench, the long-awaited Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides reunion with Penelope Cruz and Johnny Depp is finally complete. No. No. If the train is fully booked, as was stated earlier, then how is Princess Dragomir off getting extra options? Dogs on the table. Most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life. Two dogs, one cup. Who gets this excited about a train leaving? Scene does not agree with me. Actually, we love you, Penelope. We even go to bat for Vanilla Sky. But then again, you were in Zoolander too, so... God, you know there's something about a tangle of strangers pressed together for days on end with nothing in common. Boredom plus anonymity plus a constant gentle rocking. Someone's been hanging out in our comments section. Not all of us are so concerned with the separateness of races, Professor. It is out of respect for all kinds that I prefer to keep them separate. To mix your red wine and the white would be to ruin them both. That's how we're going to solve racism, ladies and gentlemen. We symbolically mix red and white wines. I like a good rosé. As do I, but a rosé is essentially a red wine that doesn't incorporate all the color from the grape skins. It's not like the Arnold Palmer of wines. The Avenger of the Innocent. That's what they call you in the paper. Poirot's an Avenger too. Honestly, there's so many characters set to be in Infinity War, it actually wouldn't surprise me to see Hercule hanging out a few scenes, measuring Thanos' Infinity Stones to make sure they were the same size. Ma chère Catherine. Movie wastes our time with love interests that will barely come up again, when all we care about is that the great mustache detective get back to some hardcore detecting. It was a great joke earlier when Hercule revealed his sleepy time upper lip holstery protector. So why is he leaving his mouth brow uncovered tonight? Especially with his OCD tendencies. The snow from the avalanche was clearly falling right on top of the train in the previous shot, but here it appears to all be in front of the train. Ladies and gentlemen, the train has been derailed! Considering they were traveling along the side of a mountain, derailment should have been crashing to their deaths. Yes, yeah, some things, they are in God's hands. It is not for us to say if we deserve to arrive safely at our destination, or if, like Lucifer, we must fall. She's fun. Touch nothing else, only the body. Movie takes 38 minutes to murder, when I was promised murder on the Orient Express. Better learn how to spell if you're gonna send threatening letters. Have you considered the Latin man, Marquez? Hell of a guy. And, uh... Well, you know, his kind, they don't have the same distaste for murder. Since we eventually find out all the passengers in this coach, minus Barrow, are in on the murder, why would they point their fingers at each other instead of just staying out of it? Hey, the watch. 
stopped at 1.15. And perhaps more importantly, it's somehow still on that table after the train derailed. We saw stuff flying everywhere during the avalanche. So how is any of this still on the table? For that matter, how is this wretched ratchet corpse even still on the bed? And later around here, a lady's handkerchief. And our little friend, the pipe cleaner. How did these clues get left here? I don't even leave a hotel room without doing a quick once over for something I left behind. And I'm not even part of an organized stabbing orgy, usually. Also, the stabbing took place for a brief moment in the middle of the night. Why would they even have those things with them? This was never a beachside puzzle. It certainly doesn't appear to be beachside, but come to think of it, neither of you really look cold, and I haven't seen a single character's breath yet. Maybe it's a dry cold. I know the dead man's real name. It is not Ratchet, but Cassetti. I know that name. Then you will also know the name Armstrong. But how does he know this? The murder tying in with the Armstrong case is perfectly fine. It's a fascinating story that sets up a fascinating mystery, but Poirot should have never come up on this information this quickly. There has been nothing to lead him to believe that Ratchet is Cassetti. He might as well have said he was Arnold Rothstein or someone involved in the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. The Armstrong case? The story shocked the world. Monochromatic exposition. Expochromatization? How do you know this, Poirot? Because John Armstrong told me so himself. He wrote to me to ask me for my help. By the time I received his letter, it was too late. Conveniently, all this has fallen into my lap again. But I have proof it's true. I found it at the foot of my bed on the cover, right where I slept. What do you call that? Blackout drunk sex with an Orient Express conductor? If it were easy, I would not be famous. Why exactly is Poirot famous? He's a very intelligent sleuth who has helped solve a ton of murders and other crimes. But at the end of the day, he's an excellent crime consultant. How many of those do you know? Human nature is perverse in its complexity to uh, plumb it. It takes the right tools. These are toys, not tools. Air cool. I prefer you put them away. We are still talking about the whole murder thing, right? Because... You said, not now, when we are done, then no one can touch us. This is the conversation he's referring to. He's not even in the frame until she says, then nothing can touch us. Which reminds me, she said nothing, not no one. I don't think you heard the conversation anyway, but get your shit together, Poirot. Were you ever acquainted with a family by the name of Armstrong? <laughs> timely dog bark is timely. Why doesn't Book here just use magic to find the culprit? That scarf obviously means he's been sorted into House Gryffindor. The other conductor was a small man with a short hair. Fraulein, there is no other conductor. Knowing how this ends and that they all conspired to do this together, the fact that they are such brilliant liars that they all fool Poirot as long as they do, and that they had time after the event to get the same story straight is one of the most unbelievable parts of this entire film. Have we checked all the passengers' luggage? All except for the Count and Countess Andrei, monsieur. Remember them? Because I sure as f*** don't. The killer is mocking me. Why exactly would they put the items in Poirot's cases? Since the Count and Countess are involved and their luggage can't be checked, why not put it in theirs, instead of enraging Poirot? Please stop! Why is Olaf with the shirt on running away here? Exactly where does he think he's going in this weather? In the mountains. It's not even a rugby team from Uruguay around for if he gets hungry. Why burn this evidence when it's quicker and more effective to just throw it down in the ravine or bury it in the snow? They tore my old man apart. And yet you claim that you did not know Ratchet was Cassetti? One thing this movie does a terrible job of is showing how anyone knows Ratchet was Cassetti. Poirot makes it a simple statement in fact early on in the movie, but with no connection whatsoever. Someone Doctor. kicked in the door, covered my face. All right, this needs to come out. Once again, this is how you dispose of the evidence. There was so much snow around. Do these people not know how to hide things and other things? This suddenly materializing pianist reveals a good question. Why aren't any of the rail staff being questioned by Poirot? For that matter, where have they all been this entire time? Also, suddenly materializing pianist is likely the working title for the eventual Weinstein documentary. The actress mother. Stage name Linda Arden. I suppose she too was of Jewish ancestry as... Who is most likely to take a stage name? Is it too far to suggest her original name was Goldenberg? My question is, since you know that this murder has something to do with the Armstrong case, why didn't you already know the name Goldenberg? Surely that was Sonia Armstrong's maiden name as well, and you ran across it before. She didn't kill him. I did. Aaron Burr misses. Also, where exactly is this semi-false confession taking place? We know there are only four cars on this train, and we've seen one sleeper car, a dining car, a bar car, and we heard Poirot say Book was... was the only traveler who slept in another coach or the only one who was not a suspect. Which I assume means staff quarters, even if they are in the same boxcar as the baggage car seen here, which is unlikely, that's still one too many boxcars. I deduce a missing car. Who's the detective now, smirky herky? Mary go. I can't let you take the blame for what I did alone. But you can be held for accessory to murder if you leave now and let him kill Poirot. Our plan was to reveal him to the police, that's what you heard. Come to think of it, why didn't they just do that? In the book, he's actually exonerated at trial, and they have no choice to get their own justice. But here, he simply avoided prosecution. Wouldn't at least one in this murder cult press for due process? And now, Mr. Poirot, I must protect myself from you. 
knocking the train off the blocks ex machina. And then a deus ex bocana. Where did they put all the other passengers that were in the other cars while they put the train back on the track? Also, imitating the Last Supper with your movie characters cliche. I mean, I saw this in History of the World Part 1. I saw it in MASH. I saw it in that 70s show. Can we stop this already? It was you, was it not, in her room the night when Ratchet came in through the window. Wait, if she saw Ratchet that night, how on earth was that poor Suzanne girl that committed suicide for false accusation ever even charged? Wouldn't the police have at least gone as far as to ask the gender of the intruder from the lone eyewitness? Would his chauffeur agree? Was it a bank loan secured by Armstrong allows him to build his automobile empire? How exactly did all these people find each other? The sister was friends with the governess, but how did the cook, the nurse, the valet, and the chauffeur all get tracked down? What are the chances McQueen and Masterman could conveniently get hired on with Ratchet? Not to mention Hardman just happened to be in the area when Ratchet needed someone to tail him. Also, if you had successfully gotten into Ratchet's inner circle, why take the pains of murdering him on a train? Why not do it at his house? You could literally do everything you did here, except in that scenario, you could easily get away with it. Also, also, how exactly were they planning on getting away with this? Mind you, they did not expect to be stuck due to the avalanche of convenience right after the murder. And they had no clue Hercule Poirot would be on the train. But they would still have had to deal with the police at the next stop. And figuring out who Ratchet was and their attachment to the Armstrong case would not have been that hard to deduce. What of the Pinkerton detective? Once uh, police officers are assigned to the Armstrong case, and he becomes attached to someone for there is another uncelebrated victim. You fell in love with the maid. Figuring out the detective was a cop on the Armstrong case makes sense, but how would Poirot know he was in love with the maid? Also, if Hardman is in on this the whole time, then why is he doing the play acting at all? Once again, no one knew Poirot would be there, and even if he's supposed to be helping Ratchet, he wouldn't have cared what Hardman did as long as he protected him. Pierre Michel of Avignon, who lost his sister, the accused maid. Suzanne Michel. By the way, how were all these people able to procure the same car that just happened to have the exact amount of rooms they needed? This is clearly a very popular train and it was sold out, which is why Poirot had to bunk with McQueen. It can only have been done by all of you. Jesus, I'm glad you finally came to this conclusion after seeing what must have been 2,000 coincidences on this train. Also, yep, they all did it. This baker's dirty dozen all conspired to kill him. But look at them in this decent sized room, and then imagine them all in one tiny rail car taking turns with a knife. There's a reason they don't show any wide shots in the reenactment. I'm not saying they couldn't have squeezed in there. I'm just saying if they did, the murder would have been like trying to have an orgy in an airplane bathroom. So I've heard. As alert as Poirot has been this whole movie to sounds outside his room, it seems a little odd that he never poked his head out once while all of them were standing outside. Mr. Ratchet? Scenario. Since we now know everybody, including the conductor, was in on it, why did he even bother to knock on the door? Why did Caroline respond in French if she didn't know Poirot was snooping around? And if this was staged, why did they even bother? Let it end with me. They're not killers. I mean, but some of them are. Mind you, some of them just stabbed a dead body, but semantics. Also, why not just let Masterman take the blame? He'll be dead in a couple of months. Selfish Masterman. You wish to go free without punishment for your crime? Then you must only commit one more. You can't let them kill. Well, and they would have had to kill Book as well, right? Along with everyone else working on the train and in the train, so just 20 more. Do it! One of you! No. I already died with Daisy. This is the return of the king of murder mystery endings. My dear Colonel Armstrong, finally I can answer your letter. I know you're dead, but this is a great way for me to end the movie with my closing thoughts. I'm looking for a Mr. Poirot. He's needed on a very urgent matter. Yeah. He is on holiday. But he was taking this train to help out with the Kastner case, so why is he still on with this holiday business? I have to take him to Egypt straight away. There's been a murder, sir. Right on the bloody Nile. Obvious sequel is obvious. Oh, he Yeah, accidents happen all the time. What makes you think it was murder? I blame the chicken. It's chickens, you dolt. Apart from you, they're the most stupid creatures on this planet. Here we've only got one rule. Never, ever let it go. My name is Hercule Poirot. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Our little friend, the pipe cleaner. Another clue? Yes, a riot of clues. This is what we call an orgy of evidence. Do you ever go by Hermione? You're saying it wrong. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. <laughs> Watch out for my butt! There's a jungle out there Disorder and confusion everywhere Istanbul is Constantinople Now it's Istanbul and Constantinople What happens if the engine stops? We all freeze and die! For the great Hercules Poirot Oh, Hercules, 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 Hercules! Why are you 
dead yet. We got better. 